Hello! This video is part of a series about how to make the quick and easy Sterling engine. The book is available at sterlingbuilder.com, at Amazon, at Barnes & Noble, or at your favorite bookstore. I'm going to show you now how to bend the crankshaft. And this is a, a tricky part of the construction. You need to really get this one right in order for your engine to work. I'm going to start with a piece of 14 gauge copper electrical wire and you can use electrical wire or you can use a little heavier gauge wire, a 12 gauge wire works well. If you want to uh, have an engine that's going to be a little more durable you can use coat hanger wire. The copper wire is easier to bend and to re-bend if you need to correct a mistake and the the coat hanger wire is a lot stiffer and it's not quite as forgiving, but it will uh, hold up a lot longer uh, if you use a heavier wire. I've made a template. The dimensions for the template are in the book, and on this template the, the key things are these lines going across. This is the center line. Uh, the wider distance here is the size the crankshaft needs to be over the displacer in the big circle and the smaller line is the distance the crankshaft needs to bend over <coughs> for the, uh, the the end out here over the drive cylinder. So I've marked the approximate positions using the engine as as a guide uh, so that I can see on my template how to bend my crankshaft and get that to fit. So the process is that I'm going to lay the the wire over the over the template and I'm going to make some bends so that it will line up with the template. Now starting right here you can see as I lay it out on the template, it's getting close. I'm making the, the bends in the middle about 45 degrees. That makes it a lot easier to install it once you have it in. And you can see there I have this section lined up on the center line and the 45 degree angles come over and that's the section right there for the drive cylinder. Now it's very important that before you make the next bend that this piece is now standing up vertically because it there has to be a 90 degree phase difference between this bend and the next one. The next bend is going to go over to the wider line on that side over there. pretty close. I can just change the angle of those bends a little bit. As long as you don't go up to 90 degrees, it makes it possible to change those distances. It's always important to look at your template. Make sure that you're keeping all of your lines straight. Now you can see we have this first bend and it's standing up here. It's a little bit long there. I can probably cut that end off. And then it's a little bit wide right there, but I can just straighten that a little bit. That's pretty close. So now I'm going to come down here so that that journal is centered and bend back down to the center line. Oh, you see, I didn't get it the same there. This is where the copper wire is nice. It's kind of forgiving.
So there we're back on back in line pretty close with the template. I want to get out to this point here where the flywheel is going to attach. I'm just going to come out just a short distance and I'm going to make a 90 degree bend. And then I'm going to make a loop. For attaching the flywheel, I can now trim off the excess. That wire loop will add a little mass to your flywheel. And I can trim this end off over here, it's a little bit long. And now I have the crankshaft for the quick and easy Stirling engine. You can see that this distance right here matches the template. You turn it 90 degrees and this distance right here matches the shorter distance on the template. I see I've got a little bit of a bend on the end there. I can straighten that out. And you can still make tweaks and adjustments to this. So if it ends up that this is lifting too far, you can get in there and you can change those angles a little bit so it doesn't lift as high. Or if you need it to lift farther, you can make changes to your crankshaft and that will help you tune your engine, get it running correctly. So there you have it.